Hey, so today we are going to talk about uh, zero budget natural farming. You may have heard a reference to it in the 2019 budget speech and this is being uh, talked about as a possible solution to India's agrarian crisis. So zero budget natural farming was essentially started by Padma Shri Subhash Palekar sir and uh, there are four important building blocks of zero budget natural farming which we are going to talk about. these different uh, dimensions because it's very important that we understand why these things are there. So the first most important factor or building block in zero budget natural farming is something called Jivamruta, right? So Jivamruta is basically you can translate it as literally as an elixir of life. So Jivamruta is nothing but a microbial concoction, right? A microbial culture which you add back to your soil so that which it should help microbes thrive and the reason this is very important is because of the role that microbes play in growing our food and this is something that we don't talk about enough right see uh, a lot of life around us really depends on microbes right for example we talk about uh, having probiotics so that the bacteria in our gut they uh, thrive and hence they make it easy for us to absorb nutrients from our food a very similar thing happens even in farming, right? So microbes essentially have a symbiotic relationship with plants where the plant root hairs give them carbohydrates, right? Energy and uh, in return, microbes actually make a lot of nutrients available to these plants, to the plant root hairs in forms which are actually absorbable. So a lot of nutrients are there already in the soil, but they're in a form which the plants cannot absorb, right? And we need to essentially make these microbes thrive so that the microbes start giving those nutrients to the plants, right? So in some sense, microbes are like billions of small mini farmers who are basically helping you, right? So now, so microbes is a very important part of the entire equation in any natural farming, organic farming, etc. And we are going to talk more in detail about how that actually plays out in a subsequent video. So what is Jivamruta? Jivamruta is basically a microbe solution which you prepare using a very low cost method, right? You take cow dung, you take cow urine, you take water. Uh, you take jaggery and you take some pulse flower or any sort of a you know uh, uh, legume flower right uh, like basin for example and you mix all of these together and uh, you let it ferment for over two days right and you constantly keep on stirring it and your jivamruta solution is ready which you then apply to your entire field and you could actually filter it and apply it through drip irrigation sprinklers and so on and so forth now why are we adding uh, so the, the process is very interesting actually. So you take a handful of soil from near an uncultivated area and typically from near the roots of an uncultivated area and in, near the roots of a tree, let's say a big banyan tree for example, right? This is kind of like uh, your initial seed microbe so to speak, right? The microbes which are then going, going to get multiplied, right? And we take it from an uncultivated area because that's where uh, man hasn't gone ahead and spoiled the ecosystem, right? So this handful of soil has trillions of bacteria in it and now we need to multiply it. So we put it into a drum, we put water into it. Now these microbes to multiply, basically they need to do cell division. So if you have to do cell division, what are the two things you need? You need protein because you are going to create more cells. Making cell bodies require protein. So that's why you add pulse flower, basin or cowpea flower. Cowpea flower is actually probably one of the most effective ones because the protein content is extremely high. Uh, so this pulse flower that you add provides the protein required for doing cell division so that the microbes can multiply. The second thing that you need for uh, cell division is energy. So that's why you need to provide sugar, right? And that's why you provide, you put jaggery into it. So when you use the jaggery, you need to make sure that you are using chemical free local jaggery, right? So you put in jaggery into it, which basically gives energy for cell division. And then you have, uh, you put in cow dung, cow urine as well, right? These basically act as nice substrates for these microbes to multiply as well. And the, uh, the cow dung itself, you need to use desi cow dung and desi cow urine, right? The reason why we ask, uh, we recommend that you should use desi cow dung uh, is this, that desi cows apparently have a much longer elementary canal, which is why there are a lot more microbes in their intestines, right? So this cow dung actually causes, has a lot of microbes as well. So that's why you put in this cow dung uh, in it. 
and then you let it ferment it and now suddenly you have it's completely full of microbes you took in a small handful of soil which had some microbes in it and now that has got multiplied by this process of making jivamruta and you apply this onto the soil so this jivamruta does two things one is you are suddenly adding a lot of beneficial microbes into the soil these microbes as i mentioned earlier are not only going to help plants absorb the nutrients but these microbes also play a very important role in fighting other bad microbes bad pathogens diseases and so on and so forth these are like these hundreds and billions and thousands of millions and billions of uh, small soldiers who are essentially fighting with you to try and get everything done right so <clears throat> so that uh, so you have added now these microbes into the soil right now the second thing that this jivamruta also does is that uh, it starts attracting earthworms right so a lot of earthworms uh, live a lot uh, under the soil slightly deeper okay so they are living maybe in the subsoil area maybe they are 100 feet below and so on and so forth because the environment on top is not really so great for them right i mean when we do chemical agriculture we use things like urea and so on and so forth which earthworms really hate and they kind of desert the top soil and they go out and earthworms have a very important role to play in all of this which again we are going to talk about uh, in a subsequent video but so so this the second purpose of jivamruta is to really attract these earthworms to the top surface because these earthworms have a very important role to play in our type of agriculture so that's jivamruta the first uh, uh, building block the second building block is called bijamruta right bijamruta is something which is very similar to jivamruta but you use it uh, during before planting you would dip your saplings into bijamruta or you would dip your seeds into bijamruta so it's a seed treatment right so when you plant a seed that's when a seed is really really at a situation where the seeds are extremely uh, susceptible to diseases pathogens funguses etc right bad funguses because there are good funguses as well so seed treatment by do using bijamruta is extremely important how you prepare bijamruta is very simple you need local cow dung local cow urine and you need some lime to essentially adjust the ph right so uh, you dip your seeds into bijamruta you dry it for some time and then you plant it or you dip your saplings into bijamruta and then you plant it so this is the second pillar right uh, there is another advantage of using bijamruta is that when you buy commercial seeds they are usually coated with this something called thirum Uh, which is actually a poison uh, this so when you do it uh, when you wash the seeds in bijamruta this thirum also gets washed away so which is pretty cool right because you are essentially adding uh, nice stuff back to the soil and not some amount of poison the third important pillar of uh, uh, zbnf is mulch so mulch can be live mulch or it can be straw mulch right straw mulch is nothing but crop residues for example or any dead bodies of plants essentially uh, in fact theoretically speaking even dead body of uh, uh, animals as well but uh, think of it as for example you have harvested your rice and your uh, remaining part of the rice is there the straw is there and you can use that as mulch the whole idea of putting in mulch is that a it adds back organic matter to the soil it gives shelter for your earthworms and microbes right so your microbes go ahead and decompose this mulch and it starts forming the humus layer as well and the third very important thing is that uh, mulch also prevents your weeds from coming up so if you look at any organic farm typically 30% of your labor effort is going to go in just removing weeds and unlike chemical farming where you would use a weedy side in organic farms you can't really do that so you have to basically manually pluck out all of these weeds and uh, this becomes a problem when you put a layer of mulch let's say 3 4 inches of mulch on top of your uh, wherever you are growing your uh, saplings the huge advantage is that your weeds get suffocated right so your weeds get suffocated and they cannot grow uh, so your weeding effort reduces significantly so that's the uh, another advantage of mulch and finally very importantly mulch essentially protects your soil from being directly exposed to the sun or to the atmosphere and this is very important because if let's say your rain hits the soil directly your soil starts leaching out of a lot of your nutrients right secondly is that your soil gets compacted when it's completely open and left open if you see fields and you have not cultivated something in the field for quite some time if you just leave it open is just going to become hard on top and which is where your plant root hairs cannot penetrate right so it's very important that if you you put mulch because once you put mulch 
uh, it protects the soil right so you can actually do without tilling and in fact in zbnf the idea is to do very light tilling or no tilling after a certain point of time after your soil has attained a particular structure right this is very different from conventional agriculture uh, so this is the third aspect which is mulch right the fourth aspect is uh, what is called as vapasa right and vapasa essentially means uh, that your soil needs to be aerated in a way such that water vapor is available to your root hairs right so if you look at root hairs root hairs don't really absorb water as such so inside soil there are these small holes called vacuoles right in which each root hair penetrates into it and then it basically needs a mixture of water vapor and air so that it can get some of its oxygen as well right so that's very important which is this is actually the reason why we go ahead and till soil to make it you know nice and fluffy right so that your root hairs basically can penetrate inside get their oxygen get their uh, uh, water vapor as well so the idea if you do mulching right and if you are activating earthworms these earthworms go ahead and make the soil uh, porous for you right so the very interesting thing about uh, uh, zbnf is that the zbnf does acknowledge that vapasa is very important to maintain for your uh, uh, farming to actually become uh, easy but it does not rely on too many artificial main means to maintain this vapasa right the whole idea is that your soil itself the soil structure should get uh, so nice because of so much of biodiversity inside the soil so much of earthworm activity that your soil is going to be porous and there is going to be a mixture of oxygen uh, or air and water vapor in it so that the root hairs can survive so these are essentially the four key pillars of zbnf right bijamruta seed treatment jivamruta uh, the elixir of life and uh, uh, mulch which is achadana which basically means a layer of bio uh, waste material which you put on your beds uh, uh, for farming and fourth is basically vapasa and all of these are very interlinked together because if you are going to put in a tractor and till your soil your earthworms are dying right if your earthworms die at that point of time you don't get vapasa right if you have not put mulch on your uh, uh, soil then the soil becomes hard as rain and sun falls on it and again you lose vapasa right and this vapasa part piece is extremely important because that's how your root hairs and your microbes are all going to live happily ever after right so uh, so all of these four factors are extremely related together so if you leave out any one of them the whole mechanism might not work and the whole idea is if you do all four of these things together right along with of course various different things when different incidents happen for example let's say there's a pest attack and in zbnf there are several different formula available for creating uh, pest repellents or ways to tackle those using natural ingredients right for example uh, there are these four levels right where there is uh, uh, three levels of uh, so there is nimastram which is basically you know kind of like neem oil right you basically make a paste out of uh, your neem tree branches and leaves and you mix water with it and you spray on that that's the first level uh, of missiles as uh, mr palikar calls it the second level is agniyastra where you will have cow urine and some other things as well in it right which you do use if your nimastram is not working and then the third thing which is brahmastra which uses a bunch of different uh, uh, leaves of different plants right uh, right from your mango to your custard apple all of these plants you basically uh, uh, create a paste out of all of them mix it with water and then you spray so brahmastra is like the strongest one which you should apply only when the other things didn't work right and these things work because they all have alkaloids within them natural alkaloids inside these leaves which actually repel pests or which attack pests right so we are going to go into great detail about each of these in subsequent videos but for now just let's uh, just take away these two things one is zbnf is about natural farming trying to grow things with the help of nature with as little involvement from us as possible because nature knows how to grow food second is zero budget or very low inputs that's the other uh, angle of it and there are four important pillars of zero budget natural farming till next time bye bye